I'm here in uh, Los Angeles, California with my new favorite doctor, uh, Dr. Bill Relliford here at the Relliford Foot and Ankle Center. Uh, thanks again for uh, having you, us thank here. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I've heard some wonderful things about some work that you're doing. Uh, so first of all, for the people who are going to be watching this, you want to tell us who you are and what exactly that you do here. My name is Dr. Bill Relliford, founder of the Relliford Foot and Ankle Institute, as well as the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program. Okay. Um, the uh, Relliford Foot and Ankle Institute is dedicated to decreasing the amputation rate in both um, high-risk populations, whether they be domestically or internationally. We do things in West Africa, the Caribbean, South America, and mm -hmm. even the South Pacific Islands as it relates to um, giving people alternatives to low extremity amputation. And then, of course, my community outreach program mm -hmm. is the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program. We go into communities around the country and we screen men for diabetes and high blood pressure in the barbershop. Got you. So that's, I'm glad you brought that up because that's what brought me here because I've heard so much uh, information about that. So what exactly is the goal of the Black Barbershop uh, Outreach? The, the, the new goal uh, that we've just launched, our new national campaign, is One Million Men by the year 2022. Our goal is to screen and educate over one million men in barbershops across the country for diabetes and high blood pressure by the year 2022. I don't know how we're going to get there. <laughs> it's got to start somewhere though, right? <laughs> we, but we put a stake in the ground and we've said that it's time to really take this thing all the way across the goal line. African American men have the lowest life expectancy of any group in the country. We mm. die earlier than anybody wow. from preventable things, which is the thing that's the most heartbreaking. Mm. When you die prematurely, that means you leave a lot of things on the table. You yeah. leave a lot of uncertainty. You leave a lot of security or insecurity on the table with the people that you leave behind. I would say a lot so of broken hearts too. A lot so. of broken hearts and yeah. uh, a lot of, of um, unanswered questions mm -hmm. of how do I navigate this world, daddy? You know, how do I deal with this relationship, pops yeah. or grandpa or uncle? Yeah. So the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program, our main mission is to educate men about the standard of care they deserve mm. you know, in this country, and many people don't know, and to give them the, the skills and the lessons and best practices on how to stay healthy. You know, in our communities, we don't have a lot of resources sometimes, yeah. but we have, uh, I think, ways to navigate and, and find those, those opportunities where we can work with what we have in order so we can be healthier, so we can be more productive people in our families and our communities as well. Absolutely. So what would you say is probably one of your greatest successes out of this uh, whole program? We've screened over 30,000 men across this country mm -hmm. in over 26 cities. And among that group of men that we screened, we've learned a lot. We learned that men really do care about their health, yep. <laughs> and that you know this whole myth that men don't like to go to the doctor mm -hmm. and men uh, don't care about their health. I think is a very dirty myth. Yeah. And uh, when we go to the barber shops, and I learned this thing from an old patron. He says, "I don't care how much you know until mm -hmm. I know how much you care." Oh, the wow. healthcare delivery system hasn't mm -hmm. really shown how much it cares, cares. about black men. Gotcha. This country mm -hmm. has done a very bad job of trying to show how much they care about black men. The mm -hmm. fact is they don't care about black men. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we see disparities, uh, racial disparities and, and racism actually shows this ugly face in the healthcare system. Mm. When you think about the historical malfeasance, medical malfeasance and Tuskegee and, yes. and other mm. types of things that still resonate in the black community, it's no wonder nobody would want to go to the doctor. Gotcha. No. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so let me ask you this. So I'm a relationship guy, right? Mm. So how would you say, uh, what's the impact of, like how does health factor into uh, relationships? You know. As, as it retains to long term. Do you really want to know the answer uh, to that oh, question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, from my both professional and personal experience, mm -hmm. that you need to be healthy so you can show your love and affection mm -hmm. in every possible way. Yeah. Even financially, you got to be healthy so mm -hmm. you can earn a living. 
so sure. you can show your your how much you love your spouse. Mm -hmm. You have to be healthy so you can physically show your affection and love and how much you love your spouse to make sure she's completely satisfied. You got to be healthy, so you got to have a strong heart. Yeah, got to have strong back and strong legs. That so that you can work, but you can also, if you want to pick your woman pick up, your yeah. if you know, as long as you ain't, ain't put too much weight on that, yeah, exactly. Like, put too much on these brothers now. But, but, but that's just real talk. Yeah. But with all joking aside, all joking aside, I think that um, your health is a prerequisite mm. to seizing opportunity. Your health is mm. prerequisite to being able to be there. For the long hours, yeah. your health is prerequisite to building an empire. Your wealth, your health is prerequisite to being here long enough so you can transfer wealth and knowledge to your babies, wow. to your kids. You're gonna leave a legacy. So mm. your health is perhaps the most important asset that you have. I've determined that there's three things that are primarily important in a man's life. Okay. That's health, wealth, and love. Yeah. If I have all those three things, I think I just I have it all. Got it. You got people <laughs> they got wealth, health, and can't find nobody. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or you got somebody and you got health, but you ain't got no money. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what was funny is I, I used to, uh, I mean, back when I was still working in Atlanta, there was a, I had one of the elders tell me, he said, um, he says, the old man will sacrifice his wealth for health and the young man will sacrifice his health for wealth. Yes. And, I, and it was funny that, you know, I didn't really, you know, I mean, he's one of the guys, he's about to retire. So, you know, I mean, there's always stories going around and it was just something that, uh, you know, it, it, it stuck with me for some reason, but it's like the older that I've gotten and, uh, you know, having kids as well, it's like, right. and, uh, and then also being a, uh, you know, being a child who's, uh, you know, whose father died early, you know, in his life, you know, uh, right. you know, my father died at 12 from, you know, from a heart attack. So there was a lot of, you know, there was a huge gap, you know, in my right. development. There's a lot of stories that should have been told. There's a lot of information, you know, that I should have had to mm -hmm. your point. Some wisdom. How do, yeah, there's a lot of wisdom, you know, where, how do I go out here and find my place, you know, in the world? And so, right. um, you know, what I realized is that was just, uh, you know, as I'm sitting here listening to you, you know, I see, uh, that health is another way of protecting you know, our families. Is Abs absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know what I've seen tragically is a lot of incredible knowledge and wisdom yeah. is in a nursing home right now. Mm -hmm. Incredible knowledge and wisdom is comatose from a stroke right now, locked and buried in the crevices of someone's mind that'll never be realized. Yeah. You know, when we die prematurely, we leave a lot of things on the table. And I think that um, as a people, the fact that a lot of our men are dying prematurely, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of knowledge transfer has been thwarted or is uh, amputated. Amputated, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when, and, and compromise. Yeah. Um, a lot of our men, young men, grow up reinventing the wheel yes. over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I believe that this campaign that we're on, and you know, even potentially a collaborative, the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program, we believe is all hands on deck right now. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That. Uh, we are looking for all the partnerships that um, we can find to take care of the total man, yeah. the whole man, um, not just a piece of a man. So there are campaigns out there about prostate cancer. We're bigger than our prostates. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we cry. Mm -hmm. We get depressed. We, uh, we have issues that are bigger than that. Yeah. And I believe that the healthcare and delivery system in, in the society has done a very, very devastating thing in not speaking to black men. That's why the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program uses the barbershop mm 
mm -hmm. which is in many instances considered the black men's country club. Yeah. Where <laughs> you have, oh, you can get almost anything you want in a barbershop yeah. in our community. We talk about everything. And historically, um, black owned barbershops and beauty shops and churches during the civil, civil rights movement were the only places that African Americans would not be molested by um, uh, the Ku Klux Klan oh, and, wow. and, mm -hmm. and other you know, uh, racist elements. So that was one of the few safe spaces we had. You know. The few islands of solitude mm -hmm. where African Americans could gather mm -hmm. and to plan. Mm -hmm. And so now we've taken that same existing infrastructure. What we do with the Black Barbershop Health Abuse Program, we take the existing infrastructure in a community and we just make it work better. Mm. Okay. So let me ask you this. So, I mean, to, you mentioned earlier that, you know, there's this myth about, you know, men don't go to the doctors and everything. So you said it's a dirty myth. So what, what could we offer people to, as far as a, a plan or some sort of rally, rallying call to, you know, to offset that? Okay. Like, why is that not true? Okay. So when is the last time you've seen a billboard talking about men's health? The complete yeah. total man. Oh, yeah. I've, okay. Never. Never. Mm -hmm. right. So, but we see billboards about women, yeah. maternity issues, pregnancy issues, mothering issues, mm -hmm. breastfeeding issues, all of those things, right? Yeah, yeah. But never about, abuse So, so stuff, what yeah. we find is that when you don't speak to me, you tell me you don't care about me, mm. but, and I have no value. Yeah. So how the question is, so with the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program, we've turned that and flipped it upside down. Okay. Because when we go into a barbershop, the line sometimes is around the corner for men who want to get the diabetes checked or blood pressure checked. So I'm like, wow, this doesn't seem like men don't care about their health. It <laughs> seems like health don't care about men. Wow. So we've taken this whole thing and we, we have a contrarian theory that is not that men don't care about their health, is that health doesn't care about men. Mm. So when you go into a barbershop and you see our program in action, men, they just kind of like melt like little boys, like, wow, somebody cares about us in here. Somebody mm. really cares about what's going on. That, that's, a, that's a common statement we get from African-American men when we go into the barbershop that somebody really cares. Yeah, you know, and I think it's interesting. I've seen similar reactions in my work, um, you know, particularly with some of my live events that I've done. You know, I've had, uh, I had an event a couple of weeks ago where I was talking to the guy. I was actually uh, dem uh, presenting some of my information at a bridal uh, expo, and I had this guy come up to me. And I mean, his eyes were just wide open. He's looking at all my marketing material and everything. He was like, man, he was like, He's like, this is the first thing that I've seen in here that's for me. You know, for me. For me. Right. And usually, um, black men or just black people is one size fits all. Even jeans. Mm. We got to, the jeans were made from somebody else. We got to try to fit in. You know, our bodies are different. Different, yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. We got to fit in <laughs> to a different design. But when we can feel when something speaks to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why I founded the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program because I believe that, um, and let's be real about it, African-American men are the tastemakers of this world. Okay. People are trying to look like us. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we don't really know we have it like, we don't take, we don't recognize, we're not fully aware that, that we have it like that, yeah. right? mm -hmm. that we are the branding elements. That's a fact. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. If we sag, then they sagging in Alaska. When you know they don't need to be sagging. <laughs> right. It's a On stiff breeze in Alaska. Right? <laughs> if sure. we wear one earring, they mm -hmm. wear one earring. Mm -hmm. We put two earrings, they use two earrings. Yeah. So when you are speaking to the tastemakers, you got to come up with something that's innovative and different. Sure. So what's happening is you come to the tastemakers with something that they already created mm. or that's not original yeah. or it's not, not authentic. So when you speak 
in my opinion, to African-American men, you need to come with some authenticity mm. in your message yeah. because we're the tastemakers. Okay. That's, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. We were talking earlier about what's one of your proudest moments uh, and we were talking offline and uh, you'd mentioned a gentleman by the name of Dante. So it was like, share with everybody the story of Dante. Yeah. Dante is like my son. He started out as my barber. Mm -hmm. And one day I was in need of a haircut and my old barber was not there. He had the sign on the door that says, you know, be back in two, but it's three. It was three, yeah. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I need a haircut. And so I walked mm. down Market Street and I saw a barbershop, another barbershop, mm. and everyone was busy except this one chair. Mm. And it was empty and he was standing behind the chair. You know, that's not a that's good a sign. sign. That's, that's not, not a good sign. Bad omen. <laughs> <laughs> and there were other people waiting for the other barbers. Like, like something must be. I said, but you know what? So his certificate still got wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, you know, I don't have that much to do, but yeah. I, I'm just going to go ahead. And I said, look, man, I just need you to do this, do this. Mm -hmm. He did a great job. Mm -hmm. So we built a relationship. And uh, one day, uh, we were working out and he told me that he actually was pre-med and uh, had a bachelor's degree from Grambling State University. Oh, okay. And I was intrigued by that. Yeah. So I decided to ask him uh, during our workout, uh, what about bringing doctors and nurses into the barbershop? You know, what do you think mm -hmm. about that? He said, man, I think it would be a great thing to do that, Dr. Rutherford. I said, okay, fine. So several weeks go by, and I'm in the barbershop. I never forget it was a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And um, I heard a voice say, you know, what are you waiting on? Mm -hmm. And I turned to Dante and said, Dante, I said, we need to start the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program. And we shook on it. Mm -hmm. I went to Crenshaw Boulevard, and I started talking to other barbers. And they were just telling story after story about health issues and diabetes and heart mm. attacks and strokes. So were similar stories at each location. At, at each location. And right. that was mm. the, um, the message that I needed to hear inside that this was something that we needed to do. Yeah. So fast forward, we start the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program. Dante, my barber, is the National Barber coordinator and his job was to coordinate all the barber shops around the country. Okay. So this particular day we're in Harlem and it's so much going on. It's just so much good feeling mm -hmm. and we're being greeted and, and uh, just embraced by the entire community. Mm -hmm. And he comes to my room and he says, I think I want to be a doctor. Mm. And wow. he's maybe 25 at the time, 26, and my mind is, well, you know, there's some water has gone under the bridge, and you've been yeah. a barber for several years, and, and although you have your bachelor's from Grambling, how are we going to do this? Sure. So you may or may not know that Cuba has one of the finest and most incredible healthcare delivery systems in the world. Hmm. Okay. They train some of the most uh, highly skilled physicians in the world. They also offer free medical school to people in the diaspora. That's people throughout the world of uh, okay. African descent for free. Wow. Hmm. Dante applied. He was he accepted. Got he got in. Wow. He Man. just graduated <laughs> back in July. He is now Dr. Dante Kelly, MD, my barber. And every time I think about it, it almost gives me a tear because in our community, I believe that we have to achieve solutions by any means necessary. It may not be mm -hmm. the, uh, the traditional route. Sure. But mm -hmm. the other story, most of that story, is that who any, anyone who may be listening here, if you have a burning desire for something that you believe you must have, mm -hmm. that just know that you're going to get there. Forget about the route you're going to, that may be taken to get there. Just sure. know that the end destination is going to happen. Yeah. No mm -hmm. different than when you put your uh, uh, Google map thing in, you just put the address in, you don't know what 
alleyway, a byway. You, yeah. know, you just know you're going you to just see there. a line. Yeah. So <laughs> Dante, Dante, um, is a unique individual in that even in the early stages of our relationship and friendship, he was dependable. Mm -hmm. He did what he said he was going to do. Uh, if I needed him for something, it was going to get done. Yeah. And there's certain principles that are fundamental to success. Some strong Whether character. Whether uh, he was yeah. a barber and now a doctor, I'm confident that he'll have the same discipline uh, as a doctor as he did as a barber. Yeah. And so uh, I'm just immensely proud that the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program produced it's doctor. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, I mean, it was a wonderful story. And yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate that. Because yeah. I think a lot of people need to hear that. So, uh, so Doc, when we were talking earlier, you had mentioned, uh, you know, about one of the, you know, that the operation or the outreach program has a lot of needs and that, you know, it's uh, all hands on deck type situation. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, you know, what's, uh, talk to me a little bit more about, you know, what it is that you're looking for. What kind of help do you need? We're looking for inspirational people. Okay. We're looking for inspirational programs and initiatives. Mm -hmm. We're looking for people that can inspire our men to be the best they can be. Mm -hmm. We need people that can ignite that something that's inside of them uh, to be the best husbands, the best fathers, the best grandfathers, the best mm -hmm. business owners, yeah. even the best preachers. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for somebody to mine and excavate those things inside of you mm. to bring them to the surface. Now, why do you feel like that's more important than just bringing simply expertise to a situation? Inspiration comes from passion, mm. okay? And passion comes from something deep inside of somebody that becomes contagious, mm. okay? okay? I need to feel what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. And I tell the people in our black barbershop camp, you know, when you are evangelizing mm. our message, if they don't have tears in their eyes, when you're done with them, you haven't done your job, mm. good enough job, and for them to see the reason why our men need help and need to lead healthier lives and more productive lives. So we need people in programs that know how to dig mm. and excavate and mine, you know, all those things and remnants uh, that are deep and buried inside of our men to bring them to the surface mm -hmm. because they're there. Yeah, absolutely. They're there. Mm -hmm. They've been buried by depression. They've been buried by racism. They've been buried from hopelessness. Yeah. They've been buried from you know, all the things in the psychic violence that we are subjected to on a day in and day out basis. If physical violence can do damage to you or cut a bone or break a bone or skin, mm -hmm. then psychic violence is, is more even uh, everlasting and requires even greater repair yeah. than physical violence or physical wound. Sure. So we have a lot of wounded men there, but you don't see the wounds when you, when you encounter them. Yeah. But you know that they're mm -hmm. there. You can tell that they're there by their actions. You can tell that they're there by the way they walk. Mm -hmm. You can tell by the level of aspirations that they have or no aspirations. So we're looking for a toolkit. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I mean, so to your point about, you know, these, you know, wounds being very deep, you know, we, we all know that, you know, our, in our community, our people, our men, you know, we're a different breed, you know, and so right. sometimes, you know, there may be, you know, a non-traditional path required, right. you know, to be able to reach us, you know, and start some of that healing and that restoration, you know, mm -hmm. that you're talking about. Uh, so earlier we were talking, you know, offline, you had uh, told me about close the door. So share with people. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So I think it'll resonate with a lot so, of people. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I have to use every technique available to me mm -hmm. to save a life. Okay. And when your mission is to save a life, you do 
what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have to use language and and techniques that are that are off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. You know, like case in point, uh, there's a patient who may not really understand that what they're doing on a daily basis is compromising the well-being of their families, mm -hmm. their grandkids, their children, their community. Yeah. So I have this little thing where I say, it's time to close the door. And with close the door means what I'm about to tell you yeah. is not going to be perhaps what typically a doctor may tell you. Mm -hmm. And I have to use some language. I may have to say like, God damn it, you mm -hmm. know, you're killing yourself, man. Yeah. Or, and I can't even just say it on camera really like I, what I want to. You may have to beep it out, right? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but I may uh, have to illustrate to them what uh, is at risk and what's in the balance yeah. okay? mm -hmm. in a way that other people may not be able to illustrate. I may have to tell them as I close the door, man, well, yeah. what you're doing, all these beautiful kids out here, depending upon your leadership, yeah. or your mm -hmm. well-being, and you're so selfish that all you can think about is getting out of here to smoke another to cigarette. Take a drag. Then he just started crying like this. And I said, mm. I said, you would compromise all of this love that's depending on you. And he said, I never had anybody put it like that. Mm. I said, I said, now I want you to do right. I said, do we have an understanding? <laughs> <laughs> and we shook on it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so then I told the family to come back in. I said, uh, we have an understanding now. We're yeah. gonna be all right. <laughs> <laughs> So closing the door can be a so, good thing. It so, may be a little rough. So, so it's a little rough. And, that, and so uh, and some other patients, when I mm. talked to them about, when I said, uh, close the door. Yeah. That mean, I do that with my preachers all the time. Mm. Because the preachers, they've been put on a pedestal yeah. so much. And I tell them that this is my ministry. Mm. Like, you got a ministry? I have a ministry, too. You in my church, hmm. and in my church, you got to lose some weight. Yeah. You can't keep eating fried chicken. I said, uh, fried chicken dinners are not in the Bible. Hmm. And by the way, Jesus walked everywhere, so he must have been <laughs> pretty healthy with all that walking. So I don't know where it is yeah. in the Bible, but it's hmm. in there, right? Yeah. So um, I tell people that what I do is a part of my assignment beyond purpose you know assignment now, now talk about the difference what's your I mean because we said we talked about that earlier so what's the difference between someone following an assignment and somebody following a purpose okay a purpose has too many loopholes mm. to get out of being impactful and being productive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> too many loopholes. So there's a back door in purpose. Too many, do, too many loopholes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. When you say assignment, that is more public. It's a lot more purpose driven. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot more uh, outcome driven. Yeah. Purpose okay. is not outcome driven. Assignment is deliverables. When you have an mm. assignment, you have wow. deliverables. Okay. Yeah. Purpose doesn't have as well defined deliverables. An assignment means, well, it's like an assignment. Your homework assignment is yes. to yeah. do pages 23 to 45. Mm -hmm. That's your assignment. Mm -hmm. Well, my personal and professional assignment is to decrease the amputation rate in high-risk populations, both domestically and internationally. That's my assignment, right? Yeah. Now, there's certain things I have to do to achieve that. Mm -hmm. So the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program is one of the tools I use to reach that segment gotcha. of mm -hmm. the population uh, of this country. I have international programs as well. We even went to Haiti mm. with the Black Barbershop Health Outreach Program when uh, I was watching television and 
I was seeing all of these people devastated by the earthquake and being amputated on. Yeah. Mm. And I told one of the doctors uh, working with me, I said, look, I'm either going to cut the television off or I'm going to Haiti. That I can't keep watching this knowing that I have the skills that you have to, something you can do, yeah. I can offer. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's go. Yeah. And we went to Haiti. We had we uh, flew into Santo Domingo and then drove from uh, uh, Santo Domingo mm -hmm. into Port uh, Port Port Prince, Prince, yeah. right? And it was perhaps one of the most life transforming experiences I've ever had. So Black Barbershop has done some international things as well, and we wow. ran into a couple of barbers in Haiti. <laughs> so. You know, so I mean, I appreciate you sharing everything. I mean, I think what you're doing is is awesome. I mean, I think it serves as a you know as a shining example for you know the idea that there's something that all of us can do. Mm -hmm. You know, that we've all got something. And I mean, I got chills several times just listening to you talk. You know, just talk about your work because it just it really just resonates with me and you know gives me the uh, motivation to continue to well, do. Well, I'm what very I do. proud mm -hmm. of the work that you're doing because. I mean, some statistics show that, you know, people not getting married like they used to. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and divorce is on the rise and, and things like that. And people are remaining single and all these types of things. And so uh, I'm very proud uh, of the fact that you are providing the glue yeah. to try to keep it. It don't sound like what, when I've heard it, it ain't duct tape. No, not at all. But it's, it's glue. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's some glue. <laughs> You know, a lot of these programs are duct tape. No, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not saying anything mm -hmm. bad about anybody, but what I've read and what I know about your program, mm -hmm. it sounds as though that it's solid mm -hmm. and it, it's cohesive. And I think that is something that could be beneficial to, I, I know the Black Barbershop Hub yeah. program, and we definitely will welcome, you know, uh, pro husband, you know, to our platform. Yeah, no, I would definitely jump at any chance to work with you guys. I mean, that's, like I said, my, the same way that your assignment is clear to you, my assignment is clear, you know, mm -hmm. to me. And, you know, I'm, uh, it's crystal clear to me that it's important that we get uh, that family unit back together. Because to me, like, that's crucial. There's so many other things that can't happen out here in the community, out in the atmosphere, until we get that husband and wife thing right, until we get that mom and dad thing right. You know? absolutely, so, absolutely. And so to me, like I said, and I love the fact that, uh, you know, just use the word assignment because to me there's accountability tied to an assignment as yes. well. You know, well, I'm I, glad you mm -hmm. it, that resonated with you because yeah. I just came up with that out of the blue mm -hmm. and I said, you know, assignment yeah. is more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Assignment is more internal. Assignment is more is deeper, deeper yeah. than than purpose. Mm -hmm. you no, know, when you have an assignment, you got to get it done. Absolutely. Even if you slip and fall, you get back up. That's your assignment. And when you have a life assignment, it's something that you don't you you wear out mm. doing it. Yeah. You exactly. don't rust out. People. A lot of people. <laughs> They rusting out. Yeah. They ain't doing anything, mm -hmm. sitting on their asses, just <laughs> rusting out. Why don't we wear out? Because you got to be healthy enough to wear out, Thank where God. you just keep going and going and going. And we all going to have our time. But I was, I just want to wear out. So I don't want to rust out. So the goal would be happily exhausted. <laughs> happily exhausted. I like that. I like that. Well, I thank you so much. Well, for thank you so much, so, so much for so much. Yeah, God and bless I, you. I'm, and I'm gonna use some of your techniques and let's see if I can have a better marriage. Hey, it sounds like you too. just threatened me with a good time. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us. That's our time. If you want to learn some more about Dr. Relaford, you can check out therealdrbill.com and get more information about the great work that he's doing. Till next time. Peace.